Okay, I have two first LEGO League robots here. Uh, one is one that I built in a video uh, before. Actually, a, a student built this robot in a video, uh, watching the video from before. If you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it. It's a great video. Great robot here. Um, and then I have one right here that looks a lot neater, a lot nicer. And uh, so we've discovered some modifications that I want to share with you that will make this robot 10 times better. The first modification is right here, okay? This is our universal attachment mounting plate. Um, this is the original one. It has a peg here and a peg here. Uh, it's difficult to get the plate on and off, the universal attachment on and off. Uh, so we modified it to only have one peg and an axle. The axle just keeps it in place and the one peg uh, goes in, and is what keeps it clipped down. Um, it's a lot better, it's a lot faster. Students have a lot uh, easier of a time getting their attachments on and off of this, of this top motor. The second is a modified bumper and we have these axles here that uh, kind of serve two purposes. You can uh, put stuff on them, maybe you need a quick arm to go on or a, uh, I don't know, to a quick axle to be higher or something like that. Uh, you can do that with this. It also kind of protects the wheel a little bit better because it sticks out just a little bit farther even with the wheel. The third kind of has to do with cable management in the back of the robots. Uh, there's a bar that we've discovered helps manage our cables and keeps it a lot neater, a lot less cables than, than this. This is kind of crazy. On the side of the robot, we have this J-beam that helps hold our cables in and helps it not be so nuts on the side. Let's get started. These are all the parts I need to make this modification, and it's not a lot of parts, plus some pegs. I just got the bin out. Start with the top mounting plate for the universal attachment. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the top uh, picture frame thing and I'm going to take the pegs out of it. Uh, I'm going to need one of them and I'm going to take the pegs out of here. And so what we should have is just this top thing that's connected to the motor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find one of these uh, tan pegs with a funny end on it. It's, a, it's an axle with a funny end on it. I'm going to put it all the way in the corner right here just like this. It should stick up without anything holding it. And then I'm going to take a blue peg and I'm going to put it right beside the gear just like that. Now uh, the rest of the pegs I'm going to fill in, the rest of the holes I'm going to fill in with black pegs. This is going to add some strength so uh, it, the, the plate, the top plate doesn't come off as easily. And then when I'm done with that, I'm just gonna slip this corner over on the axle, slip this down and click it in and we are done. The next thing I wanna show you is uh, the J uh, beam that goes on the side of the robot to kind of help manage our cables right here. Uh, I have to do a couple things before I put this on. I have a blue peg right here that is already sticking out. I'm gonna use that. I'm also gonna use this axle to help stabilize on the lower end, but I need to stabilize the upper end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a blue peg in right here and a blue axle uh, peg in right here. Now I'm gonna make sure the axle is all lined up ready for me to put this on so it's not gonna give me any troubles. And then I'm just going to clip this on just like this. If you gotta take the wheel off to help yourself out, go ahead and do that. But now we have a J frame or a J uh, beam there helps manage our cables and I'll show you exactly how in just a little bit. Obviously you wanna have the J frame on both sides of the robot. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the J frame real quick to this side as well. The next modification I want to show you is the axle uh, that are going to stick up right here that help you could put some passive attachments on these things really quickly. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these uh, beam with an axle uh, I don't know what that you would call that, an axle 
thing attached to it. And I'm gonna, whoops, and then I'm going to stick it, one of the gray axles, it's a dark gray axle with a stopper on the end of it. And I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. And I'm gonna stick it through the axle uh, hole in the thing, and I'm gonna make two of these. I'm gonna make two of them. So one for each side of the robot. And then I'm gonna take some black pegs and I'm gonna st stick them in and then I'm going to put it on the robot. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in between the wheel and the bumper. Now the bumper might come off just a little bit, that's okay, you can always click it back on. You know what they say about Legos, if it falls apart, you can always put it back together. Uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just like this. And voila, I have two things that I can connect stuff to. Now, this is why I don't want to use just a regular three axle like this, because a three axle would work, but say you're trying to hurry, you push this on and you just pull up on it and uh, well, that doesn't come out because it has the stopper on the bottom. But what if, what if I didn't have the stopper? Okay, there's a possibility that it would, I put this on real nice and tight and then I pull it out and oh, look, now my axle's gone and I gotta take time to put it back in. But if we have the stopper, then we don't ever have that issue. It just stays right attached to the robot. Now I mentioned an arm, uh, say you need to push something and turn with it, you can go ahead and make a passive attachment that looks like this, it has an arm attached to it uh, and you can pull that off very, very quickly and put something else on again very, very quickly. Really cool, really neat little modification for this uh, robot. The last thing I wanted to show you is some cable management in the back as well. Um, I'm going to put a black peg right above this little L-beam and then one, sneak it in in between this motor, uh, in between this L-beam and the motor mount. And then I'm gonna take a number, what is that? That's a, I think a, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's an 11. The number 11 beam and I'm gonna stick it on there. And now uh, I'm gonna show you how you can tuck your cables behind that beam and it'll be a lot, a lot neater. All right, cable management is tricky on robots. It's like, uh, some have good cable days and some have bad cable days. You know, wake up with bed head and it's not so good. Um, this robot definitely has some uh, bed cable going on. Um, first things first is you want to make sure that you're using shorter cables. This robot is not, unfortunately, using shorter cables, but let's see if we can make it work. Okay, so what I've just done is I've unplugged all of my cables that were up and about over the robot um, and left the ones that were kind of underneath the robot already that are kind of tucked away. So uh, now I'm going to plug all these wires back in, but before I do that, I wanna make sure that uh, I'm taking the best route to get to where I'm going. So I have a light sensor on the front here. So I'm going to make sure that I go behind the J channel or the J frame, I keep calling it the J channel, the J frame and into the light sensor. Now, uh, I want that light sensor to go to port one in the back, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tuck it behind this thing. I'm gonna take that off for a second. And I'm gonna tuck it behind the beam in the back there so it's nice and tucked in. Now, I've got all this on the side. Now, that could be an issue, but what's cool about this robot is, is it leaves some space in here that we can shove it in and tuck it away without it ever coming back out. Um, if we do it right, we won't ever have to worry about it. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the robot around and I've got a motor that is attached right here at the bottom of this and this needs to go to D on the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shove it through that little hole right there. Now it might take some finagling, but you'll get it through. Okay, we're through. Now I'm going to go behind the J-beam and up through and connect it into D. All right, we're connected into D. Now I'm gonna pull all my extra back to the side of the robot 
And again, I'm just going to roll it up and shove it in the bottom. Now that should never come out as long as you shove it in there nice and good. Yep, that's never coming out. You can see it. See the cable right there? All that black cable right there. Yep, that's it. All right, now I have one more light sensor to run. And this one's run with a shorter cable. Now I want it to go to port, let's just say four. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna run it through that tiny little hole right there. And again, you might have to do some finagling. I'm gonna plug it in four first. I'm gonna take this beam off, shove it through. Okay, we're through. Now I'm gonna go again behind the J-beam and plug it in to the light sensor. And I'm gonna take all the excess, take all the excess and put it underneath the robot. Okay, now we've made multiple modifications to this robot and it looks much better. It looks so much better. It looks like this one. It's awesome. Go build. 